What is going on YouTube? It's D-Machine and I'm bringing you another guide today on Warriors, episode three of Know Your Enemies. So jumping right into Warriors, um, they are mostly known for their consistent pressure and their defensive cooldowns. They have just about a million. But uh, Warriors are a lot of fun. If you've never played a Warrior, I definitely recommend you trying them. They are just so mongoloid in a good time. So let's, let's talk about the defenses first. Shield Wall. Shield Wall. Looks like that. It reduces all damage taken by 40% for 12 seconds though. Uh, only a three minute cooldown 40% is so much as a rep paladin trying to reduce damage for melee and for uh, Magic I can only go up to 20% for each of those and it's uh It's not nearly as good as shield wall shield wall is really good three minute cooldown But not only that guys if you go and look at the glyphs for warriors If it, they know it's gonna be a short game like they're running like a team like a turbo or something like that uh, they can go glyph of shield wall and it reduces damage by an additional 20% but reduces the cooldown by two or increases the cooldown by two minutes. So if it's going to be a short game they'll just go glyph of shield wall and then shield wall that. Next defensive ability that I want to talk about is rally and cry. Rally and cry. Looks like that. You won't really see that honestly in the game. You want to look for that. That icon. The rally and cry icon. And something to note about Rallying Cry, guys, is that it increases the health of all your teammates, including himself, by 20%, but that also makes them very vulnerable. If, for example, this warrior is playing against a warrior mage druid, and they use Rallying Cry, and the Rallying Cry fades off of the mage, then um, he's about to get hit for 20% of his current health. So if you're holding a mage at low health and he gets hit for 20% extra, you could probably gimp him. So take that into consideration, understand that it's there, and use Rallying Cry efficiently. Or uh, take it into consideration when going for a kill. Don't get discouraged too much. Next but not least, definitely not least, is Die by the Sword. Now everyone sees this and they're like, oh my god, I can't hit him ever because he's parrying a million things. Well, mages and wizards understand this as well. It also reduces damage taken by 20%. It's not just the melee that aren't are doing less damage to him. Know that, understand it, and uh, switch targets efficiently to do consistent pressure. Okay, next. Let's see. I just want to talk about this really quick. Second Wind. If you don't already know this, it increases his health by 3% um, every second when he's under 35% total health. Just know that, that they're very hard to kill at lower health. And uh, know that you're probably going to have to burst them through that. So just understand that. But this is the big one that I want to talk about. This is what I feel like a lot of people overlook or just don't know about. The stances. Now I'm sure they understand that there's different stances and stuff like that. There isn't a buff. There's no buff for them to see uh, the stances. So you, knowing when the warrior is in which stance, you have to actually physically see this animation right here. This is what you're looking out for. This animation right here, the sphere, is defensive stance. In defensive stance, they take 25% less damage. Majority of the time, warriors are going to be in this stance. Battle stance. Now, understand in battle stance, they're going to be taking 25% more damage than they would if they are in defensive stance. But they need this stance to do more aggressive pressure. So... Understand that if you do a hard switch to the warrior, more often than not, he is not going to be in this stance, he's going to be in battle. And if you stun him, he cannot switch to this stance and he's very vulnerable. Now you might not necessarily get a kill on a warrior, but if you switch it to him in a stun and their healer CC'd, you'll definitely get some big defensive cooldowns, if you know what I'm saying. And then maybe the next switch might be a kill. Something to take into consideration that warriors are still very vulnerable because of their different stances. Very similar to a DK and his unholy in blood presence, but those are at least buffs that you can see. They can't hide that shit. Alright, and last, but definitely not least, is demoralizing banner. When you throw this banner down, it, it decreases damage dealt by all enemies within 30 yards by 10%. 10% not the biggest deal in the world, but it's still something and more and honestly they can still use it to get out of roots like oh Offensive cooldowns first thing I want to talk about the swifty one-shot macro recklessness skull banner now this guy the skull banner Look at it. Take a good look at it kill this thing man It's 20 increases critical strike of the whole team by 20% It's like a two-shotable thing 
It, it only will die in like two shots. Kill it. Reduce that crit of the whole team by 20%. That could be a big difference. If you're a melee, no excuses. Kill that thing, man. All right, so that's basically their one-shot macro, the Swifty one-shot macro. I mean, you can get really intricate with the one-shot macro, but uh, that's just about it. So, I mean, something else to take into consideration is if a warrior is getting ready to burst, he's going to be saving up a lot of rage. Um, I mean, dumping the rage actually is a really fast thing that occurs, so trying to take into consideration where his rage at the entire game is just unrealistic, but know that if he hasn't bursted in a while, like 3 minutes or 2 minutes a while, and um, he has like 90, 90 rage, you're about to get a skull banner in your face. Yeah, so on top of all those stuns, they also have this disarm. It's a 1 minute disarm, it's going to be really good against another warrior. Uh, a hunter or even a rep paladin. I have two weapons on my on my paladin right now, prideful weapons. One with a weapon chain and one with dancing steel, just so I can prioritize what comps have disarm and which comps don't. Just something else for you guys to take into consideration. Tips and tricks. So I just want to talk about a few other things uh, that warriors bring to the table that aren't necessarily completely obvious for every player is their ridiculous amount of peeling and their really good um, capabilities of uh, eating CC. So just like um, eating traps with their master spell, they can also utilize different abilities like Heroic Leap or even intervene to be able to get to their healer and to try to eat traps and things like that but not only that there's their passive abilities like shockwave and storm bolt to be able to not just see or uh, stun the target to try to go for a kill or cc a healer to go for a kill but to use their cc for peeling now when their other teams in trouble which is kind of inevitable I mean cooldowns can be used CC is going to be had there's so much instant CC that using their uh, stuns to peel rather to just completely do damage is very important so when you're going for a kill treat the warrior almost as if it's like a shadow priest that's mass dispelling a trap or a cc off their healer or a rep paladin sacrificing things off the healer and keeping them in game treat the warrior the same way treat the warrior like you need to cc him to peel uh and you need to cc him to be able to make yourself your team available to kill so i mean other than that guys if as long as a warrior is being controlled relatively well keeping track of their heroic leap in their charge is definitely something that's hard to do um but if you keep track of this efficiently and the warrior is completely out of uh ways to get out of cc then you are in a good place because warriors are definitely probably the most vulnerable class to snares so um, just take that into consideration, make sure that you have that warrior cross CC'd when going for things like a trap. Alright guys, I hope this guide helped you at all, shine some light on some things you didn't know about warriors, and if it helps at all, please hit that subscribe button. It definitely motivates me seeing all these new faces, seeing all these new names coming in and being so supportive of my new series. Um, if there's anything else that you guys want me to do differently inside of this guide, let me know which class I'm doing next in the comments below. Also, make sure to follow my Twitch at twitch.tv slash dmachine52. I will be going live on May 29th, and I'll be streaming every single day. Now, I've said this in the past, but honestly, I've stopped streaming so many times before because my computer just can't handle it. And I just picked up a uh, new... Uh, i7-4770 processor. Uh, I was notified that it was an amazing processor. I got a new motherboard and it's all coming in on the 29th. So I'm getting really hyped up to be a full-time streamer. So come out, come into the stream, come hang out with me, come hang out with Bubba and watch some Rep Paladin footage or even some of my other classes. We'll see. And I'll be happy to play with any of you guys who are watching as well. D-Machine out.